Okay, it's all washed up now and I'll tell you more about it. Well, first it's not a real one. It's a replica. It's supposed to be a 1935 Mercedes 500 SSK. It's not a kit and it's not a real car. It's a handmade car. The closest you can call it is a copy of a kit. Back when I was 23 when I made that, I'm 48 now, I had access to body panels from a kit and I copied those body panels and copied everything from part of a kit that wasn't a complete car. I didn't have certainly all the parts I had to make those but I had photographs and I made the parts from photographs. I, you know I used to be a machinist and I'm good with auto mechanics so I decided to try to make a car the first time. It would be just as much effort to make any ordinary car. <laughs> yeah, so why not make an exotic one? Real cars like this in perfect condition are worth between two to four million dollars. There's just a handful in the world, probably less than ten. The wheels are real spoked rims like on a motorcycle. The body is fiberglass except for the hood, that's aluminum. There's only a few parts that I purchased, like that flexible stainless steel pipe, those lights off the top of a transport truck, hood latches. These used to be black tractor lights and I had the paint peeled off and chrome plated. It's the only real Mercedes part is that hood, em hood emblem I bought from the dealership. Two sets of transport truck horns, an emblem. Those were purchased. Of course the wheels were. Door handle and lock, both sides from old GM car from the 1960s. Electric antenna, bought new. Modified seats from a brand new 1985 Chrysler LeBaron that was crashed at that time. Used to have a high headrest but I had that cut down and reupholstered. Full size Ford steering column purchased also. And aftermarket chrome and wood steering wheel and reproduction gauges that look authentic and of course the other parts in the dash were purchased including the handles. All the rest of the external parts are handmade at least copying a kit. The frame is a very modified full-size 1984 or I mean 1974 LTD or Grand Marquis frame made by Ford. Hood opens like an old authentic car and it has the 1968 normal horsepower 289 two barrel Mustang engine with full headers and dual exhausts. The side pipes are just for looks, they don't do anything as you can see. The motor was not the original one of course for this frame, it used to have a 351M which means modified which means it was 400 cubic inches and the motor where it's mounted now has been moved back two feet, a foot cut off the front of the frame, a foot and a half cut out of the middle of the frame, a foot cut off the back of the frame and behind the rear axle the rear frame cut and squished together somewhat, maybe about eight inches. Power steering, power brakes, electric radiator fans, four core radiator because it's so narrow, got to have lots of cooling capacity, and the motor is completely stock other than the pretty air cleaner cover and the rocker covers. Authentic suicide doors. VW latching mechanism. VW cranker mechanism. Authentic old stock handles. Some little armrests from an old Toyota. Convertible top is under this cover. It's manual. It's just all folded up now. Meaning you have to just flip the top up put it up by hand, clip it down, and this part stays underneath. You can't see that and the top goes around those pegs and latches on. I've siphoned out all the old gas, put some fresh gas in, drove it around a bit, siphoned that out, and put fresh gas in again the second time. So now it's running perfect. I did have to take the carburetor apart and blow it out and clean it. It was kind of very gungy. I don't think I've ever did that before. And this is the original carburetor for this vehicle. But it's running like new now. Now that it's been driven around and running for a while, 
There's no valve tick or anything. Runs just like new, it's never been rebuilt. No stalling now, just drop it into drive and you're off. That's close to 200 horsepower. Since it's a handmade car, you have to have a serial number and you have to make that and it has to have 17 digits. So I have a firewall serial number and a windshield serial number made of unburnable stainless steel. In case there's a fire, you can still identify it. What a head turner. And the video you see on the sidebar on YouTube of me driving this car from 2007, well that's when I converted it to digital and loaded it on YouTube. That video was from 1999.